Well, good morning, church. I, uh, I'm so glad and privileged to be here. Mike said that uh, he, he's so glad that um, Jim's sending you uh, people, and, and then he said, uh, like Jerry, and then he said another young man. So I'm, I'm going to give that compliment to Jerry that uh, you called him a young man. He's going to be really excited about that. So Jerry and I are just about the same age. <laughs> uh, so I, I found out that it was Communion Sunday. Uh, uh, Jerry had told me that the first of the month was going to be Communion Sunday. So I'm going to keep it kind of brief because uh, the, the passage that we're in is just going to run right into Communion so perfectly that I don't want to take anything away from that. Uh, so uh, I, I was told that you're not a church that's going to be looking at your watches anyways. But uh, in case you've got a pot roast at home, that thing is going to be sweet when you get there. So um, I'm, I care about food as well. I, I as you can tell. All right, so uh, so we're going to be in Luke 7, uh, and, and we're going to be in, past, uh, in, in, in verses 12 through 15. And, and just to set some context for, for this passage, uh, in Luke 6, we see Jesus coming from the Sermon on the Mount. So uh, Jesus is, is um, coming out of a season where he's, he's doing some miracles, and, and people have started to follow him, and he's starting to get some recognition, and, and people are starting to say, Okay, this guy is something extra. He's special. And, and, and so we see him in, in, this, uh, in these verses as he's coming into town. So when you hear that, just recognize that he's probably coming with a crowd, right? So he's bringing people with him because Jesus is already being recognized as something special. So we start in verse uh, 12. So Luke 7, uh, 12. Uh, as he approached the town gate, once again, we're talking about Jesus uh, as he a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the briar where they, where they were carrying him on, and the bearers stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. So this is a really packed full couple of verses, and, and it's, <laughs> it's a really amazing story of, of, of who Jesus is. We're going we're gonna to really find out a lot about Jesus, and, and he's going to kind of show himself off in these, in these couple of verses. And I just kind of want to walk through uh, those verses, and to do so, I want to use three words. And, and for the next three weeks that you guys have invited me to be here, if I make it that long, you might uninvite me. Uh, I want to use these three words to unpack uh, what, what we're talking about. See, not the letter, but with our eyes, how we see. Gut, like I've got a gut intuition, right? So our gut, and then do, the verb. What are we going to do with that, all right? So those three words are going to kind of be the outline of where we're going today. So it, as crazy as that sounds, you stick with me, and I think that it'll make a little bit of sense. So in verse 13, we see it says, Jesus sees the woman of nine, all right? So right off the bat, we, we, we recognize that Jesus is doing something, all right? He, he doesn't just kind of casually walk through town, but he, he sees something even before he makes it into town. And, and this is a really powerful statement, and, and I want to unpack that a little bit more. And I want, I want to tell a story about my friend Charlie to, to kind of help illustrate this point. So my friend Charlie is a, a pastor in Rosamond. He's, he's a Youth for Christ guy as well. Uh, works with our juvenile justice ministry where they go into institutes and um, great guy, uh, man after God's heart. And, and Charlie uh, tells a story about when he was a, a young man in high school and uh, went to summer camp and uh, a, a young lady caught his eye, all right? And, and he thought, oh boy, we're going to hit it off. You know, this is going to be my girlfriend. So he does what every young man does, every, every young man that loves Jesus and wants to get a date, he invites her to church, all right? So that's that's a... That's the way to go, by the way, if you're, if you're looking for tips on dating. So he, uh, he invites this young lady to church, and so uh, they, they go to church. They actually go to Greg Laurie's church. Uh, this is 30 years ago, 30-plus years ago. And, um, you know, Charlie's telling me the story, and, and he says, honestly, I don't even remember what Greg spoke on that day. I was so kind of focused on trying to get a date with this girl that, that you know, it's kind of blanks my memory, you know. And, and um I said, oh, okay, well, is, is that Becky, your wife? You know, are you telling me how you met your wife? And he says, no. <laughs> uh, th this, you know, this girl did not feel the same way that Charlie felt. 
and uh, the story's kind of over. And, and I'm kind of looking at Charlie like, Charlie, we need to work on your storytelling skills because that's a terrible story, right? <laughs> he says, yeah, it would be a terrible story, but a year ago, I got an email from uh, a, a man, and it says, Charlie, uh, you probably don't remember me, but 30 years ago, you took my sister to church, and I tagged along, and uh, that day, I gave my life to Jesus, and I've been living for Jesus ever since, and, and I'm, wow, Charlie, that's so awesome. You know, your character and, and who you are, he must have looked up to you and really saw something in you that, that he wanted to be like you, and he, he accepted the message there, and he says, wait, I don't even remember seeing this kid. I, I, in, in my memory, this kid didn't exist. That the only thing that existed was trying to get a date with this girl, right? And that's exactly the opposite of who Jesus is. Jesus sees us, and he sees the woman of Nye. It goes so far beyond just using his eyes to physically see. He sees the woman of Nye, and he explains the story as, this is a widowed woman who just lost her only son. This woman would have been destitute. She'd have been so low on the totem pole. She'd have begged for whatever she got. Nothing would have been easy for her for the rest of her life. And Jesus sees that. He sees what's going on in the woman of nine's life. And he recognizes that. And, and immediately, um, he kind of steps into this situation. So, so this would have been a little crazy for him to step into the situation to, to the people of the time. A couple of reasons. One, she was a woman, all right? So um, if my email's in the, the bulletin anywhere, please don't send me hate mail because I'm not saying that, that women are not important, but in the time that Jesus is walking the earth, women would not have held the title and should not have gotten recognition from, from someone that had uh, uh, like Jesus' stature. So for Jesus to kind of step into this situation, was kind of a, a social faux pas. And then furthermore, this is a widowed woman, all right? So this is kind of all these social contracts that exist. Jesus doesn't care about any of them. And he steps on through and, and he sees the woman of nine. So Jesus is willing to not care about what others care about in doing uh, and, and loving those around him. So just an awesome kind of picture of who Jesus is. And, and Luke is is painting this picture of us and trying to show us the character of Jesus and his account here. Uh, so then uh, the ne in, in verse 13, continuing on, it says that Jesus has, uh, he has compassion for her. The phrase in the NIV, it says, uh, his heart went out to her. Now, if you uh, were to break that word down in the Strong's, all right, you would not see the word heart, all right? It would say something more like his gut went out to her. Because in, in, in this time, uh, they believed that the, the, the seat of love and pity resided in our gut. And, and so literally the actual translation comes off more like Jesus, Jesus had compassion for her in his bowels. That he cared so much for this woman that he saw her story and it was such a tragedy. It was such a sad thing that his stomach hurt for this woman. And that he cared so much for her. That, that he just, he couldn't let it be. Jesus saw the woman uh, and, and he recognized. So, so uh, the way that this translates is um, that Jesus was moved to compassion uh, in his bowels uh, hurt, all right? So such an interesting translation and, and it shows once again, here's Luke painting this picture of who Jesus is and he's showing us that Jesus is 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 a, a person of compassion, and, and not just pity, and not just, um, just care from a distance, but Jesus cares so much that it leads him to do something about it. Have you ever found yourself in, in a situation where you, where you see something, but you don't do anything about it? I, I, I'm sure you guys are all better than me, but, but man, sometimes, you know, I Flipping through the channels, you see those sad little kids that are hungry, and your heart just breaks, and then you just flip on past, right? Here's Jesus, cannot help himself but go and do something about it. And, and that's where we find ourselves uh, in, in um, verse 14 and 15. So it, it says, um, 
I'll, I'll just reread it because there's, there's a lot in here. Then he went up and touched the briar uh, that they were carrying him on. All right, so the briar, I, I, I don't want to get lost in translation again, but for our purposes today, let's just use the word coffin. All right, it said that Jesus went up and touched the coffin that they were carrying him in. Now, um, if you thought that, that talking to the woman was a social faux pas, this is earth shattering. All right. The, the people of this time would have been super familiar with the Levitical law, which says is that if you touch anything unclean or dead, that, that you're, you're out of camp. You can't hang out with us anymore. You've got to go spend your time ritually, ceremonially cleansing yourself. And only then can you come back and, and spend time with us. So um, Jesus has, just, just imagine it. Put yourself in their sandals, right? Here's Jesus' followers coming into town, and here's this woman. And, and there's, it says that there's a group of people with her because here's the town stepping out for this uh, uh, funeral procession, and they are essentially burying two people that day. They're going to bury the son in the ground, and they're going to bury this woman in social um, the, the perception. No one is going to care about this, this woman after this day because she has no one to provide for her. Jesus steps into this situation and completely changes what's going on. But he, sa- he touches the briar, and, and, and it just says in Scripture, it just says that they stopped. It says that the, the, the pallbearers stopped because they had no idea what to do next. I mean, this was such a crazy social no-no that no one knows how to fix the situation. What do we do next? And, and, and they're just standing there trying to figure out, how do we undo this? See, the, the, the social ramifications of this day, of this moment for this woman's life, in a moment, Jesus turns the page. No one at this moment is thinking about this woman. They're thinking about this guy who just rolled into town and and is talking to a widow and now touching the, the coffin of this young boy, right? So all of a sudden, all the negative, all the bad, all the, all the things that, that, that this day brought for this widow are now kind of centralized on Jesus. Luke is telling us that, that Jesus takes our burden. He takes the things that, that this world says about us and, and he shifts them to him. And then he comes back to us and says things like this, you are my masterpiece. He didn't see the widow as a widow. He didn't see the widow as a social outcast. He saw her as his masterpiece. And he was willing to help others do the same thing by taking the focus off of her and putting it on himself. Luke is showing us that Jesus is willing to step through social contracts to break all of the social norms to see us, to care about us, and to step into our mess. Jesus breaks the social norms and sacrifices for the woman of the nine. He, he touches the coffin, and then he says, get up. And the young man sits up and starts talking. And then just a super awesome piece of scripture at the very end of 15, it says, he gave the boy back to his mother. I, I literally, every time I say that out loud, and I, I've, I've practiced this several times now, I get goosebumps because what a beautiful picture of what Jesus is doing. He is redeeming this woman when he hands her son back to him. No longer will she be a social outcast. No longer will she be defined by being a widow and, and a sonless mother. But now she, she will have her social status redeemed, She'll have her economical status redeemed. And Jesus, in a moment, steps into this sad, sad tragedy and totally changes it. Luke is showing us who Jesus is, and he's writing out the characteristics of Jesus and helping us to understand who he is. And I just think Luke is just doing such a fantastic job of painting this picture of what it means to be uh, uh, what, what Jesus means to us, showing us who Jesus is through this story. But 
we have to, to, to take this story and not just recognize it that, that this is a story about the woman of Nye. What we have to do is we have to put our names there. We have to say, Jesus sees us. No matter the color or creed or the walk of life that you're in in this current moment, Jesus sees you. And he doesn't just see you, he sees your story. He sees your faults. He sees the best of you, and he loves you. Jesus sees us, and that's what Luke is trying to tell us through this story. Jesus uh, has compassion on us. His bowels ache when our bowels ache, when, when our life is falling apart and when things aren't going perfect. Jesus has compassion on us, and he has empathy to do something about it. Jesus enters our mess just like he entered the mess of the woman of nine. He cares nothing about the social ramifications of loving you. Is that true of us? Is that always true of us? Next week, I'm going to talk about our responsibility in, in the sea gut do. But right now, think of the how, how amazing the grace, and thank you for singing that this morning, Kevin, right? The, the grace that Jesus provided. How amazing is that grace? It cares not about what we care about. It cares about the love that, that Jesus has, and he's willing to provide always. And then lastly, uh, it, it, Jesus sacrifices, right? Th this, this woman, she was redeemed in a minute. Jesus walks into town, gives her son back, and she's redeemed. All of the things that the, the stigmas that would have been on her are gone. How true is that for us? Jesus, on the cross, through his death, burial, and resurrection, redeems us. We have that opportunity to be redeemed just like the woman of nine. We don't have to carry the stigma of whatever this world's putting on us. Whatever the name people want to attach to us because Jesus gives us other names like sons and daughters, like masterpiece. That's how we're redeemed. Just like the woman of Nye, Luke paints this amazing picture of what it means to be uh, someone who is redeemed. So, love that it's communion today. Just think that this is such a beautiful tie to what's coming in this story, right, the, the, this, um, this foreshadowing of how Jesus raises this boy from the dead and redeems this woman is exactly the story that he's going to live out. He's going to raise from the grave and he's going to redeem humanity. And, and so today, as, um, as we, we think about that redemption that Jesus provides, the redemption that, that comes from the cross that comes from the grave that comes from Jesus what are those things that you're trying to hide from Jesus what are those things that you don't want Jesus to see and I've got bad news for you he sees them but what are those things you're fooling yourself by saying oh he, he doesn't know about this what are those things we're compartmentalizing and I just want to take just a couple of moments for us to to throw those on the, on the altar, to give up what we've been holding on to so desperately, the things of this world, the things of this earth that, that keep us from connecting with the kingdom of God. So just take a couple of minutes, bow your heads, and, and spend some time in prayer with Jesus as we, uh, before we enter into communion. Dear God, Lord, we come before you humble, but we recognize that uh, 
that we're not perfect, Lord, and, and Lord, we lay our sins before you, that we remember your sacrifice on the cross, Lord. We, we recognize that you take your, our sins and, and you take them upon yourself. Lord, we thank you so much for, for how much you care for us and, and how, how amazing your grace is. Lord, we, we think of the time when you tell the widowed woman, don't cry, and how cruel that would have been, Lord, if you didn't do what you did, how you stepped into her life and how you raised her son from the dead, how you redeemed this woman in this time. And Lord, you say the same thing to us. You say, fear not, because this life is not all that we live for. Lord, we look forward to the time of eternity and glory, Lord, in which we can enter into to communion with you daily. And Lord, we uh, just thank you so much. And in this time of, of communion, Lord, we, we look back in, in remembrance of who you are, Lord, and what you've done for us and how you redeemed us, Lord. And we, we pray and we thank you. And Lord, we look forward to your kingdom on earth, Lord. In your son's holy and precious name, amen.